Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about security. So we've talked about, you know, how, you know, how do you set them up? What are some of the baseline situations that are involved with your portals? How do you go ahead and attach to CRM information using like entity forms and entity lists? Now I want to go back and just talk a little bit about security and what are some of the options that you have around how to authorize people to access your, your portal, how to go in and, and set up some of the different web roles that are going to define who can go to what pages, who can actually be portal administrators, where they can go in and they can modify modify content and some of the individual items associated with that. So first and foremost, when you think about portals, the way it kind of ships out of the box is it uses a contact authentication mechanism. So each portal user is going to have a contact record associated with them inside CRM. And now it's your normal contact record. It just will have an additional form associated with it that will have portal information that'll define things like, you know, what their username is, are they going to go ahead and be able enabled for login, are you setting up account logout, have we done anything from an email confirmation perspective, those kind of things. So each contact that's going to authenticate to your portal needs to have an, a web role associated with them that kind of defines what they have the ability to do inside the portal, what, what they can see, how they can access information, um, what are some of their you know permission sets that you work with that. So that's done through web roles. And then those web roles have additional options that you can attach them to, such as web access pages, um, uh, of ND permissions, those types of options. So those kind of work in conjunction with each other to determine, okay, from a per perspective of a user, what can I do inside the portal? Now, from an authentication standpoint, there's several different ways that you can handle authentication. Um, you can just use local authentication, and that's what's kind of set up out of the box, where it's going to use their contact record. That contact record is going to store some individual information about them. It'll have their password information there. They'll go ahead and they'll log in authenticate to the portal and then they can access information from there. If you're looking for more of kind of a federated type option, there are options around there where you can configure your portal for external authentication. So if you wanted to use like a Google account or a Facebook account, that can be configured within the application. Um, you can define what your external providers are. You can set up the authentication mechanism between the two. Um, there can be kind of a registration process. So you can have them actually sign up and then you can kind of approve them. You can send out invitations. There's a lot of ways that from an application perspective, you can define how they actually will get their information out to them and how they want to be able to access the portal. Once you've defined how they're going to authenticate, now it's really a matter of authorizing them to be able to access specific areas of the portals. And that's done through a few different scenarios. The first option that you have are what are called web roles. And so these web roles basically define what actions and permissions they have to specific protected content within the portal itself. You also have what are called web access rules. And so these web access rules allow you to basically go in and control such things as publishing access actions um, and con information that web roles can actually do across the information as well as controlling what specific pages are going to be visible to people who have a specific web role. So if you define one just for authenticated users and you want just them to go in and access specific areas, you can do that using access rules. Access permissions are more of the front end editing. So one of the things that you saw when we first went in there was you had the capabilities to go in and you know make changes to the content and add pages and work with stuff. The web access permissions are going to define what specific web roles and what specific people have the ability to access some of the editing tools and on what page they would have the ability to access those options. And then finally, when you start getting into entity lists and web forms and entity forms. Now you start talking about accessing other types of information. And so you're now also going to need to control what they can do within those situations. So for example, if I'm a contact and I want to look at cases, do I want to look at just the cases that I've submitted on the portal? Do I want to look at just the cases that are associated with my contact record? Or do I want to look at all the cases that are associated with the account that my contact record is attached to? So using entity permissions, this is where you can kind of define almost like security roles and, and access levels. You can define kind of across the board how you want them to be able to see the information associated with that. And you can get very complex with these entity permissions. There's different subsets and different tiers that are going to define specific types of permissions that they can do based upon who the user is and what specific records they own. 
So first, let's look at this from a login perspective. So if you're a user that's logging into the portal, this is the screen that you're going to get presented. So it has you, it gives you the capabilities to first sign in with the local account. So this is if you've used kind of that contact-based security where you're storing all the information in the contact record. This is also where if you want to be able to federate with an external account, this is where they would be able to do that. So if you had actually gone in and set up, you know, like Facebook authentication or Google authentication, this is where you would be able to do that. You'll also see that there's a couple of different tabs in here. And these tabs basically allow you to define, um, you know, if they want to register straight for the portal and then be able to request access from that standpoint or one of the other options that they have for giving people access to your portals is they have what's called this concept of invitations where you can send out kind of an individual invitation to a specific user or you can send out kind of a group of, of invitations out to a group of users and what's nice about the the group of invitation options as well as the singular option is you can actually when you define that invitation and you say okay we're going to send it out you can define inside that invitation what specific web roles the the members of that group should actually have so once they redeem the invitation they access the portal those are going to be the web roles are going to assign what they can do inside the portal itself. So now let's go ahead and take a look at it from the CRM administration perspective. So if I go into portals, first and foremost, here's my contact record. So my contact record is going to define, you know, kind of what security I have around that person. So if I were to go in here and do a search for this administrator account. I can open this up and when I scroll down, I'll see some of that information that kind of defines what specific items they have. So this is where if I scroll down into my portal information, I can see what their username is. I can determine if their email has been confirmed. I can define if we want to use two-factor authentication. This is also where if I do have any external entities that I want to tie to this specific account, this is where I would have some options to be able to handle how that process works. I also would have the capabilities from within here to go in and define whatever specific web role I want for this user based upon who they are. And remember, the web roles are really going to define what they can do inside the application. Now, from a web roles perspective, they do come out of the box with several different web roles that allow them to work with it. There's the administrators, anonymous, authenticated, and then event managers. But just like any other entity inside CRM, you can create these different web roles based upon what you want them to be able to do. If I come in and I look at my entity permissions, this is where when I start having my entity stuff, this is where I can actually define what those items are. So you can see in here with my different um, items based upon what the entity is and how they're accessing it, this is how I can kind of define what the different items are in regards to how they're going to be able to see and what information is going to be presented to them inside the application. So there's a couple of different options in here um, and they boil down just to kind of different scenarios. So for example, global, if it's a global scenario, I'm going to be able to see all of the items in there based upon the entity that I have permission to. If it is more of an account-based situation, now if my contact is associated with that account, I am only going to be able to see the items of this entity that are associated with the account that I work for. I may or may not have submitted those items. They may not be attached to my contact record, but they're a part of that particular scenario. And if I do more of a contact situation, now I'm looking at items that are more associated with kind of the contact scope or inside my, my specific contact record. So these are just some of the utilities and items that you can use to kind of start working with it. So what I would just recommend is if you have a little bit of time coming in here and just playing with some of the different um, you know, web page access rules and some of the different items so you can kind of define what specific things they can do. For example, with the web page access rules, you can see that this is where we're defining the ability to make changes from a administrator perspective. So this is how you can define, you know, what editing capabilities people have. So the combination of all of these different elements are really what's going to help you lock down and really give the users of your portal a very customized experience. So that's going to do it for today. That's kind of our look into how portal authentication and portal security works at a basic level inside the new portal capabilities for dynamic CRM. Hope you found it informative and useful. And again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks again for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.